Good morning, Zodiac, and welcome. 18th of October, the Soul Family Reading. And today, using the Ethereal Visions Illuminated Tarot deck, I just want to do like a little eh, mid-month checkup, we call it. It's Monday. Uh, it's going to be a big week. Uh, full moons, the uh, elephant in the room. Mary. Uh, Trying the galactic center. I mean, there's so much going on. Everybody's saying it. I don't have to say it, right? There's, if you're up on astrology, um, and people have been saying for years, and I could see it, uh, what they're talking about. And this month, very month, October, pop, pop, pop. This is in the collective. But personally, that's weird because personally, it's a mixed bag. But a lot of people, this breakout energy, it's wonderful uh, energy. Uh, but for a lot of people, it's the opposite. And for the people it's rough for, it's 90% of that is uh, Jupiter now. Uh, when Jupiter brings you the goodies, it's a little rough-handed. It can knock the shit out of you first to clear the plate, to clear the runway. You know, it could just sit in like, okay, everybody, I uh, want you to orderly clear the runway. Uh, we got a flight coming. Jupiter just comes in and goes, whoosh, and the planes go flying everywhere. Uh, damn it, so that, that goodie can come flying in. And that's an optimistic way of looking at it. I'm very Jupiterian. Um, but, you know, even if things are bad, there's lessons that need to be understood for our greatest good. However you shake that out. I just want to put a little energy on these. I haven't used these in a few days. I've been so sore. <laughs> I worked on my... Uh, oh, it just uh, wasn't COVID. I should just say it. But yeah, I had COVID. You know, but no. Yeah, thank God. Just a sinus infection, you know. So for me, it's like uh, this kind of a continuing process of kind of, wow, uh, I'm really alive, you know. Um, and I think this Aries moon, you will be feeling it now. It's not that specific in energy. Um, this is going to be one where if you're down, it's going to be like, kicking you until you want to get up and do something about it, right? If you're up, it's going to make you really want to take that shit on the road, I think, you know? Um, just Aries, take action, cardinal energy. This is where we, like, take direction of our life, you know? Take the wheel. I've been saying that a lot. You watch the links on Facebook? Um, yeah, kind of like Mars taking the wheel. That's us personal. Also, over the weekend, I did all 12 signs. I had a busy weekend. Um, instead of doing my regular readings, I just did all five, uh, 12 signs, and I did a Mercury retrograde read. So it's there, check it, by sign, a uh, little bit longer reads. And it's really reading the one that you can't get out of your head. Probably the one that keeps popping back up at Mercury retrograde. If you got that one, it's the one that got away. It's a theoretical relationship, but an important one. It's not meant to be the one that we're in, we're thinking of. Uh, we may understand we're never going back to it, but just trying to uh, forensic read, I call it, to kind of mine emotionally, spiritually uh, from that energy, something that's beneficial to us uh, since it is something that's on our own dear minds. So now, this is just like a state of the union. <laughs> Five of swords. <laughs> Five of swords. I'm feeling it. It's tussling, man. It's tussling for me. It's like I have this strong sense that I keep uh, writing. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm crazy, I guess. You know, Sagittarius. I'm feeling the Sag. It's like, wow, man. It's like uh, arrows are hitting their mark before even being flung. And so I'm really husbanding my mind. If I find myself, honestly, with a single negative thought now, and this is, took a lot of work to get here, I still have them, but I catch them every time I catch them. And I'm like, ah, negate that. I look at it. Sometimes I'll go, okay, well, that's a negative thought, but it, I understand it's a concern. Like, a, I try to recognize if it's from my inner child, uh, some kind of need that needs to be addressed and not ignored. So I don't want to uh, willy-nilly, you know, ignore all negative thoughts. But this is it. It's like, a, you know, it's like battling to a standstill. I mean, what do you win? Sort of your own mind, or I guess peace of mind is what the, the game is. You know, and here maybe... It's almost like one way to look at this. Maybe he's achieved it. Swords are down. He's okay. He's just sitting there contemplating, like, what the hell was all that about? 
You know, these they stick up. The Ethereal Tarot it's a little softer. The energy of it's softer than the other decks. And contemplative always. Hmm. Queen of Swords, what's blocking us? <laughs> getting to the point. Getting to the point. Uh, you know what I'm thinking of right now? I see in my mind. Uh, you know how, uh, what the heck do they call it? If you see uh, the Air Force One, certainly the U.S. Uh, presidential plane, you know, uh, with the switch uh, of a button, uh, they can shoot out these uh, very powerful flares and a tremendous heat, and they fly off the angel, I think they call it, or something, right? You might have seen it, you know, and they, they go flying off from it in all directions. So if there were a missile coming at it, it might mistake one of those bright, heat, hot flares as the engine and, you know, miss the uh, thing. It's like, this is kind of what we're doing. I get it. What I, I had a therapist call me out on this when I was like 21. It was like, this is a, y your mind's like throwing out so much stuff that it seems like you're really busy and you're really working, you know? It's a tussle. But really, you're not really getting to the actual point because this is the queen here in reverse because this is in our blocking position. Boy, I tell you, this is where a good friend can come in handy. Someone you trust enough to say, say the Queen of Swords is going to say the hard thing. Hmm? And this is saying the hard thing to ourselves. It's like, um, um, it, it doesn't have to be anything that kills us, brings us to our knees. But something we're not considering out of, maybe like this could be too, this could bring to me too. We've been so damn busy like just defending ourselves and surviving and, um, doing the work, um, which is mental energy here and communication. You know, we really haven't been had time to put it into the big picture, like the Uranus picture. Like again, the, with a lot of the uh, Mercury retrograde readings, you know, Mercury's the lower octave and Uranus the higher octave, higher mind. We have this, maybe this Queen of Swords, like this higher mind energy is Aquarius, you know, Uranus by link, um, that would help uh, put put it all in perspective, like what we're doing this for. Oh my God, and the king of swords. Not any king, out of the entire deck. We got the blocking is the queen of swords, and the advice is the king of swords. This is like doubling down. This is like, okay, everything I just said about this, yes, maybe a friend can help us put this in perspective. Usually the thing that we're avoiding, the big thing that we're avoiding is the one that's hard for us to deal with, it's a little scary, it's triggery as hell, you know, and so we don't want to deal with it. And Spirit's coming in here, this is the advice from Spirit, seriously you got to deal with it. This is like, uh, I got this feeling like if you're a little kid and you're like screwing around and Dad walks in the room, and he's got that look and you're like, oh shit, you know, this is like from Spirit, like I don't usually get this from Spirit, we're pretty buddy, buddy. But this is like kind of stern, you know? This is like, no, I'm not kidding around here, Dave. You seriously got to deal with this. Um, and man, you know, this even Mercury retrograde, you know, I'm trying to wrap up that energy. Check out your uh, sign uh, in that reading. See if it relates to you. Um, it may, if you're, someone's on your mind, you know, it means something. And this is definitely about the mind. This is definitely a Mercury retrograde thing. I mean, guys, we've got Five of Swords, Queen of Swords, and King of Swords. All swords so far. Um, it could be to me that there's something trying to come through. There's some realization. It, this could be, you could call this a download. If you're a spiritual person, I'm okay, you know, with to go full spiritual guy and say, man, you know, because I'm telling you what, Mercury retrograde is more about downloads and it is about like electronic problems or it's more about mental downloads spiritual downloads and then it is uh, about exes coming back um, and that's this is clearly indicating that part of it and you got the queen and the king of swords here it could be some full-on romantic going on and obviously there's air signs involved but with the queen of swords in reverse it'd be the divine feminine is the problem. And it's kind of like how this works, I don't exactly understand. 
But what Spirit's advising is the Divine Masculine needs to step up and bring this into balance. They're out of balance, but it's the Divine Feminine that needs to be kind of corrected in some manner. Um, i be honest with you, this works for me, but I'm a dude. Um, I need to have more Divine Masculine energy, and I know that. Um, I'm literally, I can call on this, and I do it through poetry and stuff. And oddly enough, you know, in my intentions, and it's like firing up, you know. But I like to stay in a little more divine uh, feminine energy where I'm most comfortable and where I feel I have most of my power. And uh, it's just, this is what's, this is projective energy. Divine feminine is receptive. So I prefer to stay receptive as a being, I guess. Um, but there are times when... You know, mostly the female lines do all the work. <laughs> you never notice, you know. And the male just lays around. You know, until something really big comes along, you know, uh, then the male line jumps into action and takes care of business. Have you ever seen the uh, <laughs> African safaris uh, real fast and brings down whatever the threat is? It could be a rhino or something. Um, and that's kind of what this is speaking of. You know, there's a time and a place. Um, and for me, I feel like uh, the divine masculine is more attached to the ego, its actions, more Mars here. If you think uh, Mars in a, uh, is in Libra, it's in an air sign. Um, and correcting relationships, it's correcting, it's developing, emphasizing relationships with us right now. But this retrograde energy is part of that too. So this is all about the, our minds, all of this kind of whatever we've been throwing out there and dealing with. You know, it's, it's really about balancing the divine masculine and divine feminine within our own mind and thinking processes. Now, literally, just got, you could think too feminine, like, you know, uh, you know, everything you see from just, say, a female's point of view to be the most literal. Um, and... Or you could see everything from a, what's a dude's point of view. Everything's got a beer in their hand and it's a pickup truck and it can go quite literal with that. But there's so many levels of this, you know. And the main thing, I think, is that yin-yang, that receptivity and, and activity, passivity and activity. And it's kind of indicating here that we need to have more divine, masculine, active, projective energy now. In the Ace of Cups. And we need to pour that into what we love. This could damn well be a person. That that, that could be. Um, but this is us. Out of all of this, I think what we find out, that it opens up something emotional. Because this is deep emotion here. So this balancing of the Divine Masculine, the Divine Feminine, bringing them into some kind of harmony. Perhaps now there's just too much emphasis on the Divine Feminine. Doesn't mean the Divine Feminine is bad, wrong, in any way, shape, manner, or form. Uh, doesn't mean the Divine Masculine is good, bad. It just means that balance, you know. And it feels like as we get this balance, what we're seeing here in the future is uh, like an emotional enlightenment, you know. Emotional release. Um, really getting love, really getting recognition, really feeling validated. I'm feeling here just feeling so validated and loved. It's just kind of just swimming in it like a cup of validation and love. This is us here, guys. The bottom of the deck. I'm not surprised to see justice. So this is all part of a karmic situation. Um, it, the node's getting ready to move into Taurus and Scorpio. That's going to be a big deal. Anytime that happens, you know, that's a big deal life just check it out and go back and look at two and a half years two and a half years you know it's a big deal these cycles um so this is all part of that 88 lines gate too if you haven't had you know, success with manifestation here it is this is love though it's something emotional you know honestly to me what this could be simply and i say simply but it's everything is breaking through and having in our minds a complete sense of a peace just being at peace with ourselves and not worrying and second-guessing and what about this and 
uh, stuff that happened in the past and just sitting around and just drinking a cup of coffee. Is Day of the Dead coming here in Cancun? And allowing us uh, ourselves to feel some peace, you know, because um, uh, sometimes karma is good and justice. This can be our karma coming in. This could be, I get the feeling, man, it's a long time coming. Yeah, but it's a short time to get here. Thank you, guys.